Hi, I'm Matthew Santangelo. I'm a student in Cabrini University's Introduction to Mass Communication course. In class, we're learning about how to be a critical consumer of news and information, as well as a responsible producer of media. For this website project, I'm stepping into the role of responsible producer and working to educate audiences about the injustices of ethical clothing. Okay, so as far as ethical and sustainable fashion, I didn't know a whole bunch about the topic before this project, but I had a general idea of, you know, I had a general awareness of the fact that many clothing products weren't produced in the U.S. and that the countries they were being, the clothes were being produced in didn't necessarily have the best conditions for the workers and the factories in general. Over the course of this project, I feel as though I learned a lot about the specific conditions of the workers, you know, just how little they are paid compared to how much they would be in America. And also, it made me realize how available ethical and sustainable fashion is if you're looking for it. So if you're trying to find products that are made in America and or by um, fairly waged and treated workers. I feel as though social media has had uh, an astronomical impact on raising awareness of social justice issues ranging from, I'd say, you know, that spans a, lot, a large variety of topics. But um, ethical fashion, I mean, without social media, I wouldn't have found a lot of the information about ethical fashion that I did during this project. So it definitely had a large, it has a large impact on social justice in general, and also specifically for ethical and sustainable fashion. One thing that I feel everyone should know about ethical and sustainable fashion is probably that, you know, like I said before, just how available it is. Um, I didn't know there were so many different websites and organizations that sold ethical and sustainable products. And I mean, also, I'm sure you can just go into a store that and look for brands that are those specifications. And I wasn't aware that it was so available, but I think everyone should be aware of that. I believe that um, the most effective way that I can give effective coverage of the ethical and sustainable fashion problem over, you know, media coverage is what I'm trying to say, is to just mainly share, like, the disasters that have come about because of a lack of ethical and sustainable fashion. For example, the Rana Plaza disaster was really shocking to me. And I think situations such as that really win people over in terms of buying more ethically. The brand I chose to look up was Nike. I don't always purchase Nike products, but um, I've purchased a few. And I have to say, I know that they have had somewhat of a reputation for not having the best uh, sustainability and working conditions. And I looked at, and since I looked it up, I found out that this was true, especially in the 90s. Their working conditions were subpar, to say the least. But then, more recently, they had improved their working conditions and sustainability a lot. But they kind of took a step backwards and their environmental footprint is, again, better than it was, but less than ideal. Their working conditions are a lot better than they were, but, again, not great. And they, their animal awareness was all right. They used a few organic furs and sources of that nature, but the overall rating was not good enough, but regardless, it had still made a great improvement um, compared to what it was in the 90s. So uh, I learned a lot about that. I did not know that they got a lot better than they went back. So 
that's that. As I've worked on this project, I've come to understand that media's role in society is to really be the people, you know, the source of info that exposes the truth and what's wrong and what can be corrected or adjusted in order to create a better society overall. So that's about it. Thank you for watching.